Last time on CRG, we successfully overclocked our TF330 using a 108 MHz crystal. That gave us a 54 MHz CPU clock and a sysinfo score of 10.45 MIPS. At the end of that video, I asked the question if we should try and push that out to a 60 MHz clock using a 120 MHz crystal. The overwhelming response was yes. So in this week's video, that's exactly what we're going to try and do. Will the TF330 take a 120 MHz crystal? There's only one way to find out. Before we get started, some housekeeping first. After the last video, I thought our TF330 had died. Long story short, but I was being a bit thick and didn't notice that this enable jumper had fell off. Without that in place, the card does not work. That was missing, I didn't realise and I thought the overclock had killed the processor. But no, put that jumper back on. It's perfectly fine and the 108 MHz overclock is perfectly stable, but the chip does get a wee bit hot. These chips are actually only rated at 40 MHz, so as the card comes to you stock, this is already overclocked. We have pushed it even further and that's why it's getting quite warm. Now, when I initially thought this was dead, our good friend Mark, aka Super Duper, came to the rescue and very kindly donated this ceramic 50 MHz 030 processor. This is the full chip. This features the memory management unit or MMU and this is what we're going to be using on our 330 going forward. If anyone is looking for one of these terrible fire expansions for your CD32, I cannot recommend Mark enough. Super Duper has listings on Amibay for this card. It's very, very reasonably priced. The quality is absolutely top notch. Definitely worth giving them a shout if you want one of these cards for your CD32. Just do not ask him to overclock it. He will only supply the card at 50 megahertz and rightly so. If you want to overclock it like I've done, well, you need to try and do it yourself. Now before we jump in and swap out to the 120 MHz crystal, let's first of all try this chip on here at 108 just to make sure it works okay at that speed. And also let's compare temperatures. This thing has been running the Frontier demo here, the intro, for about 20 minutes or so. And it is currently sitting at about 40 degrees. That was the maximum temperature we read before on this chip. So I'm going to swap over to this one. We're going to let the Frontier demo run for about another 20 minutes. And we're going to see just how hot the ceramic is getting. Okay, so we have our gold top CPU fitted. We've been running the Frontier intro for about 20, 25 minutes. Let's see what sort of temperature we're getting. Not too bad, about 23 degrees. This chip runs quite a bit cooler than the black one. Is that going to give us the headroom we need to hit that 60 megahertz with the 120 megahertz crystal? Well, who knows? We'll have to try it to find out. In brief conversation though with Stephen Leary during the week there, aka Mr. Terrible Fire who designed these boards, he wasn't even sure if this would work at 51 megahertz. But we have proved that it's working pretty fine at 54 with the 108 MHz crystal. Enough talking says you. Let's get the 120 on here and let's see what happens. Okay, 
Okay, so we need to get this off. Gonna be using plenty of our heat proof tape again. Just to mask off this entire area. Then we'll heat this up with the heat gun. Get it off. Stick on our 120 megahertz crystal and see what happens. Right, same as last time, we have our heat gun set to 340 degrees and our air speed is to three quarters. Let's heat this up, get it off. Right, that's it off. This time I'm not going to burn myself. Get you out of the way. Right, we'll get all this tape off. Clean up these pods, then we'll get this on. Moment of truth. Is it going to post? Okay, here we are. We're all hooked up, ready to go. Same as last time, we're going to try it first without this. Let's just see if it will boot with the 120 megahertz crystal, 60 megahertz clock. Let's just see if it boots to the CD32 splash screen. Power on. Very, very promising so far. It's looking good, isn't it? It is looking good. Let's get our CF card attached and let's see if she'll boot into Workbench. Hmm, not so good. Something doesn't smell right. What is that? Right, hold on. Investigation time. Right, so let me show you what's happening. As soon as you power it up, you get this message. No disk present in device DHO. So it seems that whatever's happened, whatever that sort of electrical burning smell was, something in here must be fried. Because if we take this CF card and we stick it on the main PC, and if we boot up WinUAE, Let me make sure that's the right card. Yep. If we start the emulation. Exactly the same error message. So, has our overclocked TF330 somehow fried our CF card? How would it have done that? I don't really know. What are we going to do? Right, I have been over this and over this. I spent probably about an hour at it. And the conclusion is 120 megahertz just doesn't work. It is unfortunate. The machine does post to the CD32 splash screen. It will not load anything. 
off the ADE. I've also tried uh, reattaching the CD drive and booting the game that way. Does not want to know. I tried using an old IDE drive I have rather than the CF card. Still will not boot. So it's just not stable at 120 megahertz. So let's put it back to 108. And I think that's probably the best we are going to be able to do. Unfortunately, it seems to have completely corrupted my uh, CF card. Oh well, I'll just have to get another one. That's toast. Right, let's put this back to 108 megahertz, and uh, hopefully nothing else on here is damaged by the higher clock speed. I don't think it would be. But uh, let's put it back and test it. Right, so we're pretty much back to where we started. The 108 megahertz crystal is back on here. We're still gonna go with the gold top chip with the MMU in it, because why not? We have it now, we may as well use it. Our CF card still works okay. I had to recreate the HO on it. It was completely corrupted for whatever reason. But we've done that and we are back up and running. So we're back in the workbench again, it's just exactly the same as it was before. Let's load sysinfo for one last time. Now we have a 10.37 MIPS. Our dry stones has dropped ever so slightly, it was over 10,000 before. That's probably giving us a slightly lower speed here that was 10.45 earlier wasn't it well it's probably just one of the mysteries of sys info it isn't exactly the most accurate benchmarking tool out there yeah still the same let's just check our drive speed still quite an impressive roughly five and a half megabytes a second And that's it. So, conclusion then. Would I recommend overclocking your TF330? No, I actually would not recommend overclocking it. For all the speed increase you get with that extra 4 MHz, yes, it is nice to beat that uh, 10 MIPS barrier. But in reality, playing games like Frontier, you're not going to notice a difference. The 120 megahertz crystal just does not work. The chip itself seemed to work okay. I mean, the machine posted okay at the 60 megahertz clock, but uh, it obviously was not usable. The CD drive would not read for some reason. The IDE controller on here just does not like the faster speed. Suppose we shouldn't complain. We have it working at the 108 stroke 54 megahertz clock but as i said it is a lot of hassle for a very little gain well that's it thanks very much for watching if you enjoyed what you've seen please hit that thumbs up why not consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future stuff and i'll see you again soon